Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with another Just the Tips video. And this time I'm going to look at six different finishes that we can get from the hairspray chipping technique. Now when we're talking about uh, weathering techniques, particularly when we're talking about acrylic techniques or painting techniques, we're generally talking about uh, additive techniques such as sponge chipping where you're building up layers on top. Uh, pigment is generally an additive technique. I'm putting pigment on top of my um, uh, finished model. Uh, and then we can talk about subtractive techniques where we're removing material, we're taking something away. Uh, the hairspray technique is a subtractive technique. What we're doing is creating a water soluble mask between layers of acrylic paint. Uh, because acrylic is porous, once the water gets down to the hairspray, boom, the top layer can come off. It's beautiful. Uh, creates a very realistic chipping effect. It doesn't have to just be chipping, of course. Uh, you can use it for any sort of peeling paint. On my uh, flying restaurant, uh, the Remora, excuse me, I uh, used it to create um, layers of paint that were peeling off of the wheelhouse. In the Silent Hill hallway that I did, I uh, used it to create layers of peeling paint that were coming off the walls. What I'm doing today is I have six spoons that we're going to be working with. These are just plastic spoons that I have first coated with the um, Krylon Camo Brown enamel spray. It just comes out of the rattle can. I love this stuff. It's a great durable base for, uh, well, in this case, rust, uh, because it's going to give us a nice dramatic difference in color between the cool gray and the dark brown. Uh, but for those of you that haven't seen the technique before, all I'm going to do, in this case, I have some uh, Aquanet. Uh, when you're picking up hairspray, you want to make sure it's unscented, maximum hold, the chemical that we need out of here, uh, the more of it that's in there, uh, the better. But you want to make sure it's unscented because they usually use uh, essential oils, things like that for that, and you don't want you don't want oil on your model. I'm just shaking this up, giving a good coating. You can see it's well coated here at this point. So that satin sheen, I'm going to go ahead and blow dry that, let it dry off a bit. And of course, once it's been blow dried, you can see that it's no longer shiny. It has a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of satin finish to it now, but nothing like it was when it was wet. And in that case, You want to make sure it's very dry between layers, which is why I've gone ahead and let these sit for a while. And at this point, all I have to do is get a bit of water. I've got my water bucket over here. Pull this out. I've got a paper towel just to clean up the water and the paint, because as I'm working on this, I am subtracting paint. So I'm going to start with just a soft brush. This is just one of my sharp brushes. And I can get in here, get the area wet, and at this point, it's going to soak through that top layer, get down to the hairspray, and just start pulling up. And you'll see it start to happen pretty quick. I'm being very gentle, and I'm working in small areas. It's important to work in small areas. If you get the entire model wet, uh, a section of it may dry before you get back to it, and that's no good. It's going to change the properties of the hairspray. You can already see some of that brown starting to show through. You can also see that I'm cleaning off my paintbrush here periodically. So now that everything's wet, I can start to actually get in here and find spots where I want more weathering and just rub gently with my brush, clean it off, get in there. And because I'm using a nice soft brush, I'm going to get a less dramatic transition, or I should. Sometimes uh, semi-random techniques like this don't always cooperate, like the big chunk I took off right there just trying to chase some of the water around. But where I'm focusing, you can start to see texture coming through. I'm going to use my paper towel at this point just to dab very gently, because I don't want to rub. If I rub, I'll take off some paint. But you can see I start to get a nice chip. Let's see if I can get the uh, focus just a little better for us. There we go. So you can see I get 
Nice little weathered section there. I've got some chips over here, but that's all right. Moving on, let's talk about what we can do with a stiff brush. In this case, I've got a toothbrush. Toothbrushes work great. Um, I've also got some stippling brushes. I've got uh, well, a couple of large brushes that I simply uh, trimmed down to make them stiff. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use a different large brush that's uh, one of our next ones here. And just get the area, get the whole spoon wet. Being very gentle. Don't want to do much with this brush so that I can show off my uh, toothbrush for you. Give that a couple of seconds to soak. Now, one of the great effects that I like to get from a toothbrush, one of the things that uh, is good to do with this or the stippling brush, um, very similar to what the effect you can get from uh, salt chipping, uh, and that's to actually tap. Change directions periodically. The toothbrush will give a pattern if you're not paying attention to avoiding it. Dab, 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 dab. You can see I can start to get nice little dots here and there. I can also come in and be more aggressive and actually rub away a whole section of paint to get a more aggressive finish on the end there. So that's already two. We've got soft brush versus stiff brush. Woo, this way. Very different finishes. But wait, so there are some more. In this case, I'm going to cheat. I'm actually taking the brush or the spoon, simply stuck it right there inside my water bucket. Get off that excess because what I want to show you for this one is how to use a needle. You can use a needle, you can use a toothpick, you can use, well, anything sharp and pointy, really. Because this is one of the, the less random ways to get in here with your hairspray chipping technique is you can actually use it to create very gently scrapes, scratches. And again, with my paper towel, very gently dabbing. But you can start to see those scratches. A little shiny on us. But you would have seen the photo, hopefully at the beginning of this. Get in here, create some more scratches. Being very gentle, because I don't want to scratch down to the plastic, of course. If you're not sure how it's pulling up, no problem. Get in there with your brush, a soft brush. Give it a pull. Just to get some of the paint off the top of it. So I'm using quick light motions just to make a dramatic mark on the spoon, again so that you can see it. But again, very different effect from our last two. We've got soft brush finish, stiff brush finish, and with our needle. But wait, there's more! Alright, let's get in here with a bit of foam. So in this case, uh, what I've got is just a bit of uh, pluck foam. I'm going to get it wet. Run it over the surface very gently. Now one of the things I like about this is it can give you a nice rough finish in a hurry. I can get in here and boom, scrape off sections like this. I've got a nice dramatic edge now on my brush, but also because it has these sharp corners to it, I can create a stripe. I use this a lot on uh, roofs of cars, hoods of cars. If I'm underhauling them, I'm trying to get that uh, old streaked rust look on something. You can see how that would do well for a hood. You also get uh, different textures out of some of these things. If, for instance, I'm just going to dunk another spoon here. with a bit of sea sponge. I'm going to get my sea sponge wet. And on this side, I'm going to dab. You can dab with your uh, blister foam too. 
So I am effectively just stippling with my sea sponge. You can see I'm pushing fairly aggressively. So I can get some chips. I can get, because of the texture, peel some off. I've got some beading here, which is a fault of the hairspray. Didn't make sure I had an even coat on this one, so you get some beading. I can also use steel wool. And again, different finish. You can get those nice scrapes and scratches this way. I use this on uh, wheel wells for cars a lot, beds of trucks. Great way to get those scratches. Combine this with your needle, you can get a very nice finish for an area that gets a lot of scrapes. Last but not least, I want to talk about our last spoon because I want to talk about uh, layering. In this case, what we have, of course, this is the one I did at the beginning. Uh, we have the Krylon Brown, we have a layer of hairspray, we have a layer of the Cool Gray. I'm going to add a layer of hairspray. Blow dry that. Very important, especially when we're doing a layered hairspray to make sure that it's dry. So I've done that layer. I'm going to reach in here, grab, oh, let's grab a little red earth. Red earth. So this is, again, a hairspray on top of hairspray. Clean up my brush here. Still has the cool gray in it. So this is another layer of paint over that hairspray. Second layer of hairspray, second layer of paint. We're going to do three, three of each. So I am just airbrushing red earth directly over this second layer of hairspray. Completely obscuring the previous layers. And then I'm going to do another layer of hairspray. So we've got another layer of hairspray. Got to blow dry that. Last but not least, clean out the brush again one more time, put in a different color. Find my yellow ochre. Find my yellow ochre like I didn't know where it was. All right, so I've now got my third layer of hairspray on there. It's dry. A layer of yellow right over the top of that. And again, I've obscured all the layers. There's now several layers of hairspray, several layers of paint. And I'm going to make sure that's dry. So now that everything's dry, I've got a couple of options. One, I can get in here with a brush and brush away several of these layers. Start working down through my chips. Let's get 
get some more of that gray off of there. Get right down to my black. And again, beautifully detailed chipped paint here, right? You can see all the layers that's built up. You can do this to create peeled paint effects. You can do this to create different rust effects. Um, it's a, a good way to create, well, any very random effect. But the other thing I can do, and the only time I ever put the hoppers on my airbrush is for this. Normally I'll knock the pressure up, but this is a fairly soft paint. It hasn't had a lot of time to cure. So I'm gonna leave the pressure alone because what I'm gonna do is effectively sandblast away these layers of paint. Get the whole thing wet. I'm just shooting water. Now I'm mostly shooting pressure, but I can get some water in here. See how it's starting to peel? And the reason I use that big old hopper, I filled it, it's empty. You can definitely already see a great effect we can get by layering hairspray. And of course, you can always come back, combine that with other methods, techniques, add some scratches. Add a couple of streaks. And create beautiful weathering with very different results using the same technique. So at the end of all this, very different finishes all using the same hairspray technique i can't say enough about the technique i love uh hairspray chipping i think the effect looks great i think that subtractive methods like this uh, so that you're trying to create a three-dimensional effect that goes away from the peeled paint uh, instead of using a sponge to build it up where that, that effect is coming towards you. Uh, looks more realistic. I think you get a better finish this way. Super easy to do, and you can see that we have a lot of control over what that finish is going to look like. It's not just one way to do it. Um, yeah. Any questions? It's Justin at SecretWeaponMiniatures.com. As always, thank you for your support here. Thank you for supporting Secret Weapon. Any questions? Drop me a line. Always happy to help. Thanks for watching. Happy hobbying.